On Thursday, I celebrated the Vancouver College Grad Mass, and it was really exciting for me because I'm a former proud Vancouver College grad, and I just love any opportunity to go back to those boys and really preach with conviction and fire, try to inspire these boys to stay Catholic. And I had had two awesome experiences with the grade 12s already, and it was like just such an experience of God giving me the exact words that I needed to say in the moment of the homily. And so as I was preparing for the Mass, I didn't really know what I was going to say, but I'm like, all right, God's going to show up again, give me exactly what I need to say, and I'll be good. And so I start out in the homily, I feel like it's going well, and then I look out and I see some of the guys like looking around, I'm like, "Uh uh-oh. I think, okay, I better change this up. So I have another idea, take it that path. I'm like, going well. And then there's a guy in the back, he's like, he raises his arms after I say something. He's like, and so I'm thinking, okay, this is getting worse. One more attempt. And then after about two or three minutes of that, I just sit down. I feel my face getting red. And I'm like, well, Jesus, that homily sucked. And I tried to salvage it. At the end, by telling the boys before the final blessing, I said, well, after the homily, I just, I told Jesus that homily sucked. And I felt Jesus tell me, okay, Richard, it's okay. I'm the savior, not you. Remember that. And some of the boys kind of laughed. And I had multiple people come up to me after mass, like, no, Richard, that homily didn't suck. It was really good. But can you imagine, like, what are, what am I thinking? What am I thinking? Every time someone says the homily is good, in my mind, no, the homily sucked. And then the thoughts keep coming again and again. You ruined it. All of these boys, like 95% of these boys are not coming back to church. You blew it. You built up this connection with these boys, and this was like the home run opportunity, and you struck out. Failure. After that mass... I felt my mind, my thoughts, continually trying to lead me down a path that I knew was really bad. Thankfully, though, over the past two weeks, I've been reading this awesome book. It's called Winning the War in Your Mind. And in the introduction, this author, Craig Rochelle, he says this, our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. What we think shapes who we are. He says, our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. What we think shapes who we are. And he uses both scripture and science to prove how true that is. So I was kind of thinking like our minds are like these GPS systems. You know, every thought, he says from science, we know that every thought produces a neurochemical change in the brain. And when you think a thought enough, it creates a neural pathway in which it becomes easier to think that thought again and again and again, to go down that same path again and again and again. It's like a GPS system. You drive a certain location, and then it's like a suggested route, and it just becomes automatic after a while. Now, the key thing to realize is if if you don't like the direction that your thoughts are taking you, you need to change your way of thinking. If you don't like the direction your thoughts are taking you, you need to change your way of thinking so that God can change your life. So I realized in that moment after the homily at VC, I don't like where my mind's taking me right now. And if I don't change my way of thinking, it's going down a really bad path. So thanks be to God, I decided to change my mind so that God could change my life. And we see this so perfectly played out in today's gospel as well. In both situations of Jairus and the woman with the hemorrhage, I'm particularly drawn to the woman with the hemorrhage. It says in today's gospel, she said to herself, If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. This was an entirely new thought for this woman. For the past 12 years, she thought, if I touch anyone, I'm going to make them unclean. They're going to hate me. 
You could just imagine the thoughts for 12 years, going to the physicians, paying money, total failure, nothing working. She's isolated from family, friends, community. She's got nothing going well in her life. But then someone told her about Jesus, and she said to herself, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. You can just imagine her thinking this again and again with more and more conviction. This huge crowd around Jesus and this woman just making a beeline through the crowd thinking again, if I touch his clothes, I'm going to be made well. Saying it with more and more faith every single time. And then Jesus praised it. What an amazing act of faith. It's like she made a new neural pathway in her mind that led directly to God. And Jesus praised it. So for myself, I realized the power that our thoughts have in our lives. And I did not want to go down that negative path at Vancouver College, but to think a new thought, have a new neural pathway to God. So after the people tried to console me after the failed homily, you know, I've been working so much with this book, trying to renew my mind according to God's word, what God says about me, I had all these thoughts about, you got to leave Vancouver College. You can't stay around for the, for the lunch. No one wants to be with you. These thoughts keep coming. It's like, no, I'm not going to think that. Okay? One thought, one new neural pathway that I've blazed in my mind is Romans 8.28. St. Paul says, God works all things for good for those who love God. And I love God with my whole heart. So I know it to be true. In my life, God will work all things for good for those who love God. Because I do. I love him with my whole heart. So that includes sucky homilies. It's not 99% of the things in my life God will work for good. It's 100%. Because I love God with my whole heart. And I stayed at that lunch, and I had this great conversation with a grade 12 grad about his vocation. I get back home to the rectory. Father Hamilton says, how'd the grade 12 mass go? The thoughts come. Tell him how much it sucked. No. Okay, Romans 8.28. I applied that on and on and on throughout the whole day. Thoughts trying to lead me down a bad path, continually applying this scripture passage, God's truth to change my mind. So for myself, Romans 8.28, God works all things for good for those who love God. That's like a new neural pathway in my mind that I respond to problems. So to make this real for yourself right now, can anyone identify a problem in your life? Anyone? Anyone have problems in your life? Join the club. (laughs) Maybe it's something small like, I didn't get very much sleep at all last night. I can't even listen to this homily because I'm so tired, you know? Or maybe like, you know, a, a sibling like, or a family member just pushes your buttons and you're like, ugh. Or maybe it's something really big, like you're going through a crisis right now. Okay. Now, it's not going to be true for everyone, but if you're like me and you love God with your whole heart, you can apply Romans 8.28 right now directly to that problem. God works all things for good for those who love God. I love God, so God's going to work all things for good, including a bad sleep. It's guaranteed 100% of the things in my life, because I love God, he will work for good. So I encourage you, I've made a list of about 50 statements of scripture that I'm continually trying to say to myself, these new neural pathways that lead to God. Changing my mind so that God can change my life. I do the work of changing my mind and allow God to change my life. The option is there for each one of you. You don't have to be a victim of your negative thoughts. 
You don't have to go down that path. You can change your mind and God can transform your life. The option is for each one of you today. 